So my hope is to be able to introduce you to the pre-master's course in research methods that you will be doing at the ICP, the International College, Portsmouth. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to open up the one of the virtual learning environments that I actually use. So this is part of Microsoft Office. It's called OneNote. If you've never experienced or never used OneNote, then I would strongly recommend a familiarization with OneNote. OneNote um, is one of the best programs of the Microsoft Office suite. It's um, undervalued by many people, as is another one of the uh, Microsoft Office suite uh, programs called Visio. I use both OneNote and Visio a lot. So if we look very carefully, um, this is a OneNote notebook, which actually relates to the pre-master's course that I teach. So if you look on the left-hand column, you'll notice that week one, week two, week three, week four. So for example, during week one, I um, delivered um, um, eight hours of lectures. They are all recorded here using the Zoom um, audio video recording uh, capability. So I expect some homework to be done by the students. So we have week one lecture materials. These are available on video recordings and then there's homework. Then there's an opportunity for the students to deliver some feedback. This comes from um, a little mechanism or a little operation they have at Harvard um, Business School. It's called the uh, one minute paper. So at the end of a lecture series, I expect the students to emphasize what the big thing they learned in class today. That's really important. So at the end of every two hour lecture, they have to complete this little box. What did you learn in, in class today? And then they have an opportunity to write in this second box if there was something they weren't clear about. So, so a lot of students actually do this, not all students. Um, obviously, if you're doing it online, these have to be sent to me, but often with students in the classroom, they can just complete these one minute notes or one minute feedbacks using a hard copy and just leave the hard copy uh, in the inner box, a collecting box. So for every week I lecture, we have a similar format. We have the lectures available. We have the audio video recordings available. Then we have the homework for the week. Then we have some opportunities for the students to give feedback. Now, there are lots of resources associated with this course. Um, so you'll notice that we have, um, we tend to use several standard textbooks. So for example, if I open up this textbook here, this is a small textbook. It's an introductory text. It's published by the University of Bradford School of Management. It's an introduction to research and research methods. It's a very short text. But actually, it's one of the best introductory texts available. I will send you a copy of this because these are freely available. The University of Bradford allow these to be distributed freely. But there are two standard texts in the English speaking world. Bryman and Bell is one. Uh, this is an early version of Bryman and Bell. The, um, the most up-to-date version is actually the fifth edition, but this is a PDF version. I make a PDF version of the third edition available for you. So not only do you have the full text, uh, you also have all the PowerPoints. So for every textbook that I distribute, you have a whole range of PowerPoints. So there are, I think, 29 chapters in Bryman and Bell, and there are 29 PowerPoints. So I give those or make those available at the beginning of the course. So for students that like to read ahead, there's the opportunity to do so either using the standard textbook. Let's just open it up to show you that it is a real textbook. As you can see, it's a real textbook, 806 pages, but an earlier, earlier edition. And these are the PowerPoints. So let's just open up a PowerPoint. So 
So if you look very carefully, we have, um, this is the first PowerPoint relating to chapter one. So these are all available um, at the very beginning of the course uh, for you. And there are other texts. We also use a second main text called Saunders, Lewis and Thornhill. The current edition is the eighth edition. This is an earlier edition. It's just an earlier PDF version I make available. We're able to do that because due to the COVID pandemic, um, some of the publishers have um, you know, waived their immediate copyright um, considerations with regard to these early texts. They know that many students are not in the classroom for obvious reasons or haven't been. So this is another standard text, Saunders, Lewis and Thornhill. And the same opportunity is for you there. Every PowerPoint is available to you in advance. Um, and then we have a slightly unusual text. It's by Greener and Martelli. This is a summary text. This textbook is a summary of this textbook. So if you were to examine this textbook in detail, and then you were to examine this textbook in detail, you would notice they are exactly the same, except this is a summary text, a reduced text. That's quite a popular thing for some American authors to do. Now, there's also something called a Bryman and Bell synopsis, which means that I've taken the entire text of Bryman and Bell and I've reduced it to about, I think the full version is about 50 or 60 pages. This version is about maybe 30 pages. So if you're liking to get a quick overview of research methods, you can certainly use this um, synopsis. So what I'm gonna to do today is I'm gonna start off at the very beginning of the course and it's probably one of the most important themes of all. Uh, this is the approach to research. So if I just open up this beginning uh, Word document, and uh, I will distribute this to you. And you'll notice there are two components. The first component is the screen that I've worked through and I will maybe just edit it. So I will be working through this screen with you. And the second part is um, a section that you have to complete. So as I am completing this section here and reviewing it and editing it, you have to complete your own version here. Um, I call it program learning. I'm sure that program learning is slightly more sophisticated and complex than that. But actually, it's important to engage, particularly if you're studying online and some of your lectures at the University of Portsmouth will be online. They have a blended um, learning and teaching model now where there's live lectures, but there's also blended online synchronous and asynchronous um, teaching. So as I go through this um, lecture series briefly, I would like you to complete this section yourself. So let's make this a bit neater. OK, so whenever you design a research program, a fundamental consideration is the approach. Now, the approach is um, a really critical consideration. Now, we can say there are many different approaches to research. In fact, we could think in terms of maybe six approaches. But the two most commonly considered are positivistic and phenomenological. So let me just color code that to separate it. So on the left hand column, we have one approach to research, which I have called positivistic. And on the other right hand column, I have another um, approach to research, which is called phenomenological. Now, please note, I choose preferentially to use the word positivistic. Now, I might have chosen another word. I might actually have chosen to use the word quantitative. Quantitative means exactly the same thing as positivistic. Qualitative means exactly the same thing as phenomenological. In English, we call these synonyms, equivalent words. So the two most frequently used words might be positivistic approach 
and quantitative approach. But remember, I could actually have chosen to use the word philosophy. So if I'm talking about the positivistic approach or the positivistic philosophy, I might have chosen to use the terms quantitative approach or quantitative philosophy. They are totally synonymous. But there are other words that are also used not equally frequently. Objective research is often used to explain positivistic research, traditional research, experimental research, scientific research. These are all alternative words to describe positivistic. Subjective research, interpretive research, humanistic research, these are all equivalent alternative words to describe the phenomenological approach. So that's really important because lots of students make mistakes because they don't think in terms of these correct terms. Now remember, we are dealing with a positivistic approach or a positivistic philosophy. We are dealing with a phenomenological approach or a phenomenological philosophy. Now, the critical next step is the step I'm going to show you now. Now, some people, when they're studying research methods, get a little bit confused between approaches and philosophies and methods and methodologies and strategies. What you need to know is that the positivistic approach um, is subdivided into four different sections. So I've labeled these one, two, three, and four. Now these terms are really important. The first methodology is called survey. The second methodology is called longitudinal studies. The third survey is called experimental studies. The fourth survey is called experimental, is cross-sectional studies. Now let's deal with the first methodology, which is survey. Now, the methodology is survey. The approach is positivistic, but the most common survey is a questionnaire. So you can open your email in the morning and you'll probably find um, a marketing survey questionnaire from a firm that want you to give them feedback about the how you perceive the quality of their products to be. So the approach is positivistic, the methodology is survey, and the method is questionnaire. So that's the first methodology. And we've also indicated a first method. Now the second methodology, which is positivistic, is called longitudinal studies. Now longitudinal studies imply there's a time axis. So imagine the following. I am studying the evolution of management techniques at the University of Portsmouth Business School. And imagine I have been doing this as a long-term study. I've been studying this program since 2016. I went to the business school in 2016, 2018, 2020. I will return in 22 and 24. Because I'm interested to know how the University of Portsmouth management has changed. How has it evolved over the last um, six to eight years? Now, the next... Uh, methodology is experimental studies. Now, if you come to the University of Portsmouth and you go to any of the science faculties, for example, biology, chemistry, physics, geology, pharmacology, physiology, dentistry, engineering, you will see a large set of researchers who are doing positivistic research using an experimental studies methodology. For example, at school, you might have uh, considered Hooke's law, the uh, extensibility of a spring with different weights. Um, Robert Hooke actually is quite a famous English scientist. He was born on the Isle of Wight. The Isle of Wight is that small island that's due south of Portsmouth. So he would have passed through Portsmouth many times. And the last methodology that is positivistic is called cross-sectional study. Imagine the following. I'm interested in the role of sophisticated IT technologies. I want to know how modern 21st century web technologies are changing the delivery of teaching programs in school, the delivery of teaching programs in college, and the delivery of teaching programs in university. 
So I would be studying a school in situ, a college in situ, for example, the ICP, and a university in situ. Now, these are the four methodologies that are positivistic. 